So I bought this Constrobo tuner and uh, it was advertised as not working so I'm gonna see what it takes to get it going. Looks like the the cord here is a bit grungy and uh, probably change that out and um, so let's take a look. So here's the back you can see the tubes back there I'm just gonna take out these two screws Okay, so let's take a look here. So here we see the motor and it seems to spin freely. Looks like we're missing one of the neon bulbs. Here's our fine adjustment on the inductor. So it looks like the way this thing works is you have your input here. It comes into a, a preamp tube and then a small amplifier tube and that amplifies the signal comes out here and then goes into the two neon bulbs and uh, it's connected to the rectifier there so that when it hears a frequency it's gonna flash those neon bulbs at the frequency of the um, the input so really all this is is a small amplifier uh, amplifying sound into these two neon bulbs so the way the the reference motor works is you've got a multi-tapped inductor and each of those taps represents one of the notes and then that inductor is used to feed into uh, looks like a um, a phase inverter and then two 6AQ5 tubes that are going to be used as a, a power amplifier and what they're going to be doing is they're going to be putting just a reference waveform into the motor right here so really all this is trying to do is spin the motor at a particular rate. It's an asynchronous motor and so it needs an AC frequency. And so we're going to take a look and see if we can get this thing to work. So here's the this underside of the of the device. It looks pretty cool. It's got a nice grounding wire there. Here's the uh, multi-tap inductor with all the different points in it. And um, first thing I'm going to do is just replace this power cord because it's all cracked over here. Okay, so the, the hole that we put the cord through had this old grungy cord in it. And you can see it's kind of broken. And so I want to put this cord in it. And I'm just going to use one of these little guys here, but I need to make my hole a little bigger. Here's our bulb. And to get it back in, I think I'm going to have to loosen these screws here. Okay, so we've got our new bulb in. Looks like the pilot light is bad too. Nope, nothing. So I guess the first thing we'll check is the... Uh, I pulled the, the rectifier tube, so we'll check the voltage coming off, um, coming from the transformer. Okay, 600 volts.
That looks good. So I think I'm going to work on the neon, the neon tube circuit first and see why the neon tubes aren't flashing. And so we come in here, we go through this kind of um, the gain resistor, and then we come into the plate of this tube, and then we come out and come to this cap, this uh, filter cap, and we come into here. So I'm just going to check to see what's coming out here. So here's our signal. It's about half a volt. And um, so we see that coming to here. That signal's coming out on pin 8. And so if I look at pin 8, 52 volts coming out, but then on the other side of this cap, we've got almost on the other side of the cap, we've got almost nothing, so that's good. So it looks like it's actually filtering, so I think that cap's good. And so let's look what the signal looks like. Okay, so we're looking. Okay, so we're looking right here. And then the yellow. The blue is the input signal, and the yellow. And it looks like the blue. Peak to peak is about 480 millivolts coming in, but then we go through that resistor for the gain. So it looks like we're doubling it, we get to 820 millivolts. But it's still messed up there, I don't know why, but we'll keep looking. Okay, so this is interesting. So if we look at where we, we've got good signal here, we come up. Then we go through a switch, and we come back, and then we go into the next stage of that tube, and then we go to the bulbs. There's no signal here, or the signal's weak here. Okay, so now we're looking at pin 7. So pin 7, and that, that's a plate, or the grid, that comes out to here. So let's look at pin 7. we got a nice... 90 volts coming out of it. So I've been doing quite a bit of looking around and um, so if you look at it, you got a good 90 volts coming into here and then out of here you get just junk. This is what we're getting out. Yeah, that doesn't look good. And coming in, we have a good 100 volts coming into it. So, got to figure out why that's messed up. So, look at that. The lights are going. And, um,. I ended up recapping that. I don't think that's actually what made the difference. Around on the other side, I resoldered the connections, and I think it was actually that the connection was not. Um, I think it might have been the bad connection, but either way, here's here's a signal coming out of that that final tube. And you can see that it's got about 220 volts of um, current going across, or 220 volts of power going through it. Here's something kind of interesting. When the calibrate button is off, then we can see here that the signal going to the um, LEDs, they match up nice. I, I have a cheap signal generator I have at 440 and uh, you can see that the frequency is right around there it's not a good good signal generator but then if we put to calibrate then if we look what we're what we're calibrating against is the power line and we get a nice 60 Hertz 
Let me see our bulbs. Should be flashing at that rate, I guess. Okay, so now I'm going to start working on the motor circuit. Um, it seems to spin freely. Uh, I've watched some other videos where the cap that goes between the motor leads is bad. So I'm going to just replace that right away and see if that takes care of the problem. If not, I'll have to dig into the circuit. There's the cap that's right underneath the motor that I'm going to replace, but uh, quite a mess on that soldering job. There's our new cap. I'm a little bit concerned about this is the signal going to the motor. And um, I don't quite understand this part here. But I'm looking at the circuit diagram. And there is a 1 meg potentiometer here. And it looks like that is um, adjusting the bias on this tube. All right, so I turned that screw a little bit, and then you could see that the waveform cleans up. So if I turn it again, you can see it start to distort. So I just adjusted it till it looks good. So there you have the strobo tuner. I got it all fixed. Watch it. It takes a minute to start spinning. And then to calibrate it. And there you can see. Oh, you might not be able to see. See the top ring? That's going off the power line. So here I'm playing A440 off my computer and you can tell that it's a little bit flat. Here's G6, G5, and G3. So here's G3. And seven. So here's D, D three. Finally, I'm going to put it on um, E and just tap a tuning fork. It's not a great tuning fork. So that's my repair. I'm awfully glad to have gotten it working and uh, it was a pretty fun project.